Yo, what is up guys? Today, I'm gonna teach you and give you the blueprint to become a full stack software developer in just six months. So my name is Coach Daniel and what I want to get into is the step-by-step -step system that I would do if I were to start all over and how I would start to become a programmer and become that full stack developer in six short months. So guys, go ahead and hit that like button so we can push this YouTube video out to more and more people and make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell icon so that whenever we drop these fire videos, you can also get notified. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. So one of the first things that I want to clear out is when people start thinking about how do I become a software developer? How do I land that very first job? I want you to realize that you don't have to go to like the big tech companies right off the bat. You don't have to go to Google, Microsoft, Facebook. You can actually go to other software companies that might be local or smaller because you just need to get your foot into the door to start to get more practice as a developer to start to get that experience and over time you could build your career as a developer now the reason I'm telling you this is because very often people come to me and they're a little scared of these big technical interview questions where they have to solve some crazy algorithm skills that they tend to have in interviews for big tech but the reality is if you go to a smaller local company or other software companies they're going to be trying to look for a couple of different things not only are they going to try to look for if you know what you're talking about if you know how to code but they're also going to look for things such as your passion are you going to be a good culture fit do you have the ability to actually write clean code do you have fundamental problem solving skills and finally, can you communicate like an actual human being? So again, the reason I'm telling you is because these are things that you can probably already do and you don't have to worry about these crazy data structures and these crazy algorithms. So let that be that confidence boost for you to start to push forward and inch closer to becoming the software developer that you dream to become. Now, I quickly want to address another common question that we've gotten before, which is, well, how many hours a day Day, do I have to dedicate to this? What is the time in terms of months and years and how long will it take? Well, here's the reality. If you're really trying to make a career out of this, how many hours a day would you not dedicate to this? Because by inverting that question, you really start to think if you're trying to do this full time, if you're trying to solve problems by writing software, if you're trying to become a developer that is going out there and building software systems for businesses and companies and for people and solving real world problems, then you shouldn't be looking at the minimum amount of time that you're spending doing that. You should be looking at the maximum amount of time that you could possibly spend doing that. Because I understand some people are in situations where maybe they have to take care of their family or maybe they have other responsibilities and they can't just spend eight hours a day coding, but that's totally fine. But you have to still try to find how you can maximize that time, but also keep it in a sustainable manner. What I mean by that is something that you could do over and over and over again. So it becomes a habit. It becomes consistent. So to be quite honest with you and to be blunt, if you're just looking to spend one hour a day or 30 minutes a day coding, you're probably not going to become a full stack developer in just six months. It might take you a little bit more time, but that's just the truth that you have to understand about your personal situation. If that's really all you have, then spend that hour as intentionally as you can, learning as much as you can, but understand that it might take you a little bit longer than just six to eight months. On the other hand, if you are able to spend a little more time and you could try to hit the range more of around three hours per day, day i know it might be a little bit intense for you guys but i personally think this is good enough that if you were to consistently do that for six to eight months you would be able to get your dream job as a full stack software developer so again the big takeaway is one intensity realize your current life situation and how much time you can actually put per day to becoming a software developer, to practicing, to coding, to programming more websites. And the second point is sustainability. How often can you do this time and time and time again? Because the reality is you might have a full-time job, you might have family, you might have other responsibilities that you have to fulfill. So how much time can you allocate to make sure that you could do this over a long period of time? Because eventually you're gonna make that career switch. Eventually you're gonna get your first job so that 40 to 50 hours of your week are spent programming are spent being a software developer. So now that I got those two mental barriers for a lot of people out of the way, let's dive right into it. Anyways, guys, 
To be the best software developer that you can become, you want to make sure that you are continuously investing into your own education. And that's why today I want to talk about our sponsor for this video, Skillshare. So Skillshare is an amazing place where you could go to and you could take courses on anything you want to learn, especially in software development, so you could become a better programmer. One of the classes that I'm taking right now and that I really enjoy is called Algorithms and Data Structures in JavaScript. And that class is taught by Lucas V and I really love it because it goes into the fundamentals of how you can leverage these data structures and how you could use these algorithms to make sure that you're building optimal code. And in this way, not only will you have basic foundational problem solving skills, but you're also going to be able to practice and ace any interview that you take. So make sure to click the link below because the first thousand people who do so and sign up are going to get the Skillshare premium membership. And if you do like the platform, you can continue to learn and push what you're learning. And the best part is that it's less than 10 dollars a month literally if you just skip out on starbucks coffee for two days out of the entire month you're going to be able to reinvest that money into skillshare and into yourself if i were to start from scratch the first things that i would focus on is probably the big three when it comes to front-end development which is javascript html and css now to be very honest with you there are multiple resources out there in the web so that you could start to learn these big three and you could start to learn the foundations and the fundamentals of front end development i would suggest just digging in for just a couple weeks because after that where you're actually going to start to learn is from practice and from making real life applications so a quick tip could be just start to build out plain landing pages but here is the amazing thing and here's the other thing you're going to learn when you start to build out landing pages maybe you're not going to have a specific tutorial that will show you how to build a landing page or how to change the design the css or how to set the html but what you're going to be able to learn is there are specific features you're going to want to add and this is where you're going to have to learn how to become best friends with google because as a developer, doesn't matter what niche you're in, whether it's web development, machine learning, databases, your best friend is always going to be Google because there's someone out there who's probably already done what you've done and they put it up there on Google, whether it's an article, a video. And by using Google as a resource, using YouTube as a resource, just being proactive and learning how to bring together all these different things to solve your problem, you're going to start to develop these fundamental problem solving skills that I talked about earlier. So after you utilize the resources and you started to go out there so you could build these landing pages, you simply can start to leverage Google so that you could really start to bring in the ideas and the theory that you've learned from the classes into the practicality of building these landing pages and building these sites. And with those three things, which is plain vanilla JavaScript, CSS, and HTML, you're gonna start to have those foundational and fundamental skills when it comes to front-end web development. Now this, again, depending on the intensity of how much time you're putting into it, might take you about one to two months. But here's the important thing. After you build some of these portfolios, something that I highly recommend is you're going to want to start the application process now. And let me tell you why I suggest this. First of all, people always want to push off the application process because they're thinking, well, this place has an opening that might kind of fit my skills but i kind of want to save it for later here's the reality if you look at indeed.com if you look at any other job boards all the job postings that are there this month are probably not going to be there next month because there's so many new jobs coming in and so many jobs getting filled out so if you start the process now if you have some projects built up and you have in your portfolio you start that process now you might get some more rejections because maybe you're still on the path to learning but what's going to happen is you might start to land a couple interviews here and there and worst case scenario they tell you no but you were able to start to learn how the interview process works and you start to build those skills that you have to build later, which is how do you showcase yourself? How do you communicate yourself in the interview so that they'll want to hire you? Again, if we look at some of the initial points that I made, they want to make sure you know how to communicate. They want to make sure you're a culture fit. These are two things that you're going to be able to show them during the interview process. So if you start this early, even that month three and month four of coding, then you're just going to have that advantage so that as time passes, you have that extra practice. 
So don't be afraid to get rejected. At this point, after you build out a couple projects with the big three, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, go ahead and start submitting job applications because this, if anything, is only going to help you. Now, by this time, you might already be around month three to month four. You already have a couple projects up in your portfolio. You've already submitted your resume to a couple places and who knows, maybe even gotten rejected. At this point, you're well on your way to landing your first job as a full stack developer. And the next things that I would focus on would be learning a framework that can now tie in front end development, such as React.js. Now there's multiple ways that I would actually go about learning React.js. Very similar to before, I would kind of dive into React.js course. I would understand a little bit more about it. What are the components? What are different parts of React.js? After that, what I would do is I would try to build a website by myself, but looking at documentation. Now, the reason I say looking at documentation is because this is another skill set that as a developer, you're going to want to know. If you understand how to look at a framework, how to look at a language and learn the documentation process, you're going to be able to basically learn whatever language you need to learn in the future. And that's important because when it comes to the world of programming, there's never going to be this one language that rules them all and that's here for the rest of our lives. Who knows? There might be but the reality is things change so fast. So you have to be adaptable. You have to be flexible. And if you understand how to read documentation, if you can learn and pick up new tools and languages by looking at the documentation, you're going to be a very versatile developer that many companies are going to want in their business. So after taking the React.js course and I've gone through the documentation, I would apply a similar concept to what I applied with a couple months before. I would start to build projects. So again, just anywhere from three to five different react js applications if you have that experience of just using the framework using the programming languages and you build it over and over again you add in different features you're going to be very well versed when it comes to front end development so by this time we're getting very close to the end of the six months here we might already be like four to five months in but like I said, if you've already started applying, you're just gonna put yourself in more opportunities to get in front of the right company that's gonna give you the first entry level position. And now as part of your journey, you've already learned all the skills that you need to know to be able to land a front end development job. So the next thing I would focus on would be actually learning a little bit more about Git and how to leverage version control. The reason for this is because version control is literally used in every software project so that you can make sure that your code is safe and secure. And if any breaks come in, you can always revert back. But just by learning the fundamentals of how to use Git, how to upload your code and how to have it in a place where you could pull it, other people can make modifications, it's going to allow you to integrate with other teams. And if you understand those skills, you're going to become more marketable. So now that you have a ton of projects under your belt, you should have three to five React.js projects. You should have another three to five front end landing pages. You can start to upload all these things to GitHub or to GitLab or to any version control platform. And now for the icing on top, by this time, you should be going to interviews. You should already start to see what are the things that you need to work on a little bit more so you can land the job, or maybe you already end up landing the specific job that you want. But I would say on my journey, I still want to learn one more thing, and that is databases. By taking on this final topic, I'll now be able to transition from a front end developer to a full stack developer because I'm going to understand more about databases. I'm going to understand more about how the data is stored. I'm going to learn about APIs. I'm learning about servers. And by having this full integration, I will be a better programmer because I can develop full stack applications end to end. Now, while you're learning these big three, what I would also focus on is specifically JavaScript, because out of these three, the real programming language is JavaScript, while CSS and HTML are more like markdown languages. So with JavaScript in particularly, I would try to focus on some fundamentals. Now, some of these courses will be able to teach you these fundamentals, others will not. But what I mean
mean by the fundamentals is just simple things such as, other than writing out my functions, my loops, and my conditionals, is thinking about how do I actually solve specific problems? How can I actually start to manipulate data so that I could get the data that I need or so that I could show it in a way that's important to the user? By starting to understand these fundamental problem solving skills, I'm going to start to build my programmer mindset. The programmer mindset is one where you could see a problem and you logically start to see how these pieces fit into place and how you can solve this problem by writing code. So using JavaScript and practicing these fundamentals is going to make sure that when I go off into the real world, I have basic foundational problem solving skills writing code. So that is my exact step-by-step -step blueprint that I would do if I were to start all over again with zero knowledge. So if you are looking to become a full stack developer, if you're looking to take the next step, if you're serious about that, I want you to click the link below because we are offering the very best course on this planet that is going to teach you these fundamental skills of becoming a web developer. Everything that we just talked about from the fundamentals, from JavaScript to to Git and databases. We're going to teach you all of those things in this course. So go ahead, click on the link below, sign up for Profit with JavaScript, and I hope to see you inside. So the reason I say this is the best course is because not only will you learn everything from fundamentals to the more complicated things, to databases, to GitHub, but you're also going to build real life projects. And these real life projects like Google clone, Twitter clone, Netflix clone, you're going to have the experience that you need to showcase and actually land a job. You're going to have the resume that's going to catch recruiters attention. And once you're consistently showing up to interviews, you're going to be able to land your very first job as a software for developer. So guys, that is it. That is my step-by-step -step blueprint that I would do if I were to start all over again from zero and just a matter of six months, how I would get my first job as a web developer. Now, if you like this video, go ahead and smash that like button so we could push this video out to more people out there and go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell icon so you can get notified whenever we drop more videos just like this. That is it for this one. I hope you got value from that. And this is Coach Daniel signing out. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.